What's up traders? So I just had an interview with Dean. You guys are going to love it. This guy has 10 years of experience trading the markets. His parents won the lottery, lost all the money. He got into trading. His son is trading now. His stats are incredible. You're going to love it. Something crazy like a 95, 98% win rate. You know, stay tuned. Great wisdom, great advice from this professional trader. And I'm so excited to have him on the team. So guys, enjoy this video. And if you like what you see, like and subscribe the button below. So hi, yeah, I'm Dean. Thanks for the chance to have this interview, interview, Diego. I actually got into trading um, back in 2004, so quite some time ago. I had the interesting and unique experience of watching my parents win the lottery, only to end up bankrupt a few years later, and discovering that that actually happens to the majority of lottery winners. And not long after that, I discovered that most businesses fail, majority of people don't have enough funds to get past a month if they lose their job and all sorts of crazy stats and i just thought wow what's going on here um and at that point in time i decided i was gonna try and become you know like one of the five percent so to think so to speak and at the time i had some equity in my, in my home and here comes my first first error <laughs> i didn't borrow the equity i actually sold the house to an investor and rented back and took that money, which was the most money that I'd, I'd ever had, and got straight into trading. It was the first thing I found, um, looking at ways to, you know, start my own business and whatnot. And trading was the very first thing I, I ran to. Um, I remember paying $7,000 for a two-day seminar, and it was to teach you how to trade CFDs, how to develop. They were very orientated towards mechanical trading systems which at first I was quite excited about and I, I got really excited about the whole thing. In fact, even my first, I think it was three to six months, I think I tripled my account, but then I blew it. I blew that whole account amazingly, very quickly. And then I sort of went downhill from there. <laughs> and ironically, the amount of time it took my parents to lose though, that huge winnings from the lottery it was around about the same amount of time it took me to lose all that money I'd got from the uh, selling the house. So, you know, and I tried everything from that point down to the point where I reached the zero. Uh, I got into options trading, Forex trading. I was doing Elliott Wave. I was doing, you know, this, that, the other. And then I got, I mean, hit that rock bottom period and went through a soul searching period um, and got into all sorts of sort of esoteric stuff. But I mean, not just with trading, but actually more about the monetary system. I got right into the history of it, um, the history of the legal system, the property system, read some amazing old books. You know, it's just crazy stuff that, and got into economics, studied economics as a subject. Wow, what, what a crazy subject that is. <laughs> and then I think it was around about 2012, I actually found a mentor. And that's probably where the road turned around and started to head towards, towards where I am today. In fact, the mentor, the biggest thing about the mentor was that he taught me how to unlearn a lot of what I'd been taught. And it's very easy to get sucked into a lot of the marketing sort of hype around trading. And I think that's one of the things, and that actually is one of the things that stood out with you guys when I found you, you know, um, last year was that your criteria and the, the goals that you're setting are actually very conservative. It's definitely yep. suited me. Whereas basically every other company I looked at was just sort of in that old pot, so to speak, very, very thing that the mentor was teaching me years ago. You've got to look the other way. Don't fall for all the bells and whistles and technical indicators and high leverage and this sort of stuff because, um, yeah. So that that was a – I mean, it was still a long journey. So we're talking 10 years and then I reckon about three years ago I started to actually come out in front. And one of the other things the mentor taught me was that there's certain kinds of leverage. You've got leverage in the sense that the broker will offer you 500 to 1 sort of thing, you know. The other leverage is that if you can – create a certain skill set, um, a certain consistency, you can actually leverage that itself. And I think that what you guys are offering and there's, you know, there's other, there's other ways of doing it too, but you can leverage that skill set and that 
is a probably a most preferable way to leverage rather than leveraging a brokerage account. Mm, absolutely. I was so, so engaged in your story. That's a, that's a <laughs> brilliant story, Dean. I really appreciate it. I mean, yeah, the fact that you can leverage your, your, your skill to multiple prop firms is that's priceless. You know, that's, that, mm-hmm. that's a lot more than a, a degree in, in probably whatever anyone studying yeah. university is. It's an amazing I'll skill. Agree. Yeah. Really appreciate your, your background and your insight from your, parents winning the lottery to then losing it which is quite common I've, I've seen that many times right. because you know people they just they just spend and they want to have fun right not everyone's yeah. taught to invest I, I get that that's that's perfectly normal and yeah the fact that you've had a mentor I wish I had a mentor would have accelerated my process now mm. your mentor must be some form of a beast because you are a monster when it comes to trading <laughs> I mean I've, let's look at your stats they're pretty pretty crazy um everyone so I'm talking to everyone in YouTube right now so probably the best stats that I've seen so if you look at this equity curve there's hardly any crazy pullbacks it's just extremely consistent and even when you shifted from MT4 to MT5, obviously the new equity curve, immediately straight into a winner and again, consistency. Can you briefly explain to the viewers what sort of strategy you use just before I get into your incredible stats? So you know what? Let's take it one step further. Let me just show everyone the stats because I'm really excited. So you were trading the 12,500 valuation. Obviously, you've got a 50K cut yeah. now. You know, brilliant risk management just consistency. And I'm now looking at your stats. I'm just going to highlight it. I mean, your drawdown, this is not normal. <laughs> Hold yeah. on. Let me, let me draw this out. So this is pretty not normal. That's crazy. Your profit factor, your risk would have an 83. And then you've got a 95.8, eight, 95% win rate. And you're averaging what? Segatively 12 wins in a row and <laughs> one loss in a row. I mean, come on, just... What are you doing? What are you doing? So, okay, so when when you first drew me to this, my attention to this, I had never, these are sorts of stats I've never looked at before. <laughs> so what I did was I went, because I've, I've got a live account, which I've been trading for several years, and um, uh, this account I generated almost 40% last year. So I actually went back and had a look at these stats for the live account, and they're not as good as that. So let's get that out of the way straight away. But the profit trade percent of total is closer to in the late 70s. It's okay. so around about 78%. Um, the profit factor was closer to three in that live account. I can't remember the draw. Oh, yes, the drawdown would have been maybe 6% or 6 8% somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. So my trading strategy is basically the complete opposite to someone who would use um, like my son for example my son trades a very technical system and he only ever places one trade at a time okay and he he loves that way of trading he won't come my way he's not interested in the way i trade even though i try to tell him he's not not i'm doing it my way i i sort of my my mentor used a good analogy it's like you own a, a little corner shop and in the corner shop you have stock and some of that stock you might sell it's it's cheap stock you know uh, stuff that people buy every day like bread and milk and other stuff in there you might have bicycles you know someone might buy sell you might sell one of them once a month because i use very low leverage and i'll actually define leverage leverage to me is not how much the position size is in relative to the margin required I define leverage as the position sizes in total relative to my account size. So if my account size is 50,000 and I happen to have a hundred thousand dollar position, just say one position for argument's sake in the Euro, that to me is leverage is two to one. The fact that the broker may offer me margin of 500 to one or even 10 to one is irrelevant. I look at the position size relative to the account size and that is how I determine the leverage. And I very rarely go over 10% leverage. So or 10 times, sorry, 10 times the account size. Very rarely. And I would not have done that throughout the evaluation phase. I think I wouldn't even have got close to 6%, or six, uh, six times the account size. So you can see that my positions were always six mini lots. Or was that six micro lots? 
there'd be six micro lots, I think. Yeah. Point, 0.06. So that would be that was 6,000 euro. And the account size is 12,500. Doing a rough foreign exchange rate. We're looking at maybe <laughs> if I've got one position open, my leverage is half to one. If I open two, it's one to one. If I've now got four positions open, it's two to one. And even though the uh, rules in the evaluation stage is that you have to have a new trade on a new day, there was quite often I'd have multiple positions open at the same time. I may earmark one position for a short term profit. And if it's up 30 pips, I might take it. But I've also got another position that I might have entered in maybe 30, 50 pips lower, but I'm looking to maybe drag that out a bit, see if I can get 60, 100 pips. So this was a, this was a, the base of the system that my mentor was using when I found him, and that's what he bases his teaching on. And the idea is to take advantage of the random moves in the markets. So it's one thing to have a bias, which you obviously have to have in this yeah, style yeah. of trading, but there are going to be times where the market is not going up or down, it's ranging, and you want to be able to take advantage of that as well. So the fundamental question is, what is my bias? And once I form that bias, I'm going to try and make money, whether it's going in that direction of the bias or whether it's ranging. It's when it goes against my bias, then you really you you start getting into the risk management. And as it turns out in the valuation phase, I was expecting a bit of a bounce in the euro US dollar pair. It just didn't happen. Now my bias was US dollar bull throughout yeah. the evaluation phase. So if I had been unlucky enough that that bounce occurred just before the end of the evaluation stage, it probably would have taken me a little bit longer. So, so these stats were just, this was a bit lucky in the sense that, you know, but I would have eventually got there, but there could have been a road bump if the euro had gone up as it has done in the last uh, couple of weeks. We've had that sort of big spike. That would have slowed me up a little bit, but yeah, so. Wow. From that, that's, yeah, a general, that's a general idea of, what, of how I do it. I see. Yeah, you've got a very un- unorthodox way of using leverage and your your trade management. I see you were obviously just selling euro, and you were previously expecting a buy. Well, how do you form your bias then when you're looking at the, your your actual chart? Well, what sort of <clears> so, strategy do you use? I just for well, the so can understand a bit. Yeah, well, I don't use any technical analysis to form a bias. As someone who's um, studied the history of the monetary system, it um, it makes me a bit of a permanent US dollar bull from the big fundamental backdrop. Yeah. So, but that's that's really long term. You can have a counter move that could last a year or even two years and will go against you. But the fundamental, the way the system operates, I can't help but not be a US dollar bull. <laughs> but these, these moves that can go against you, they're basically sentiment driven and also portfolio driven in my view. So, you know, you, the, when the euro US dollar pair gets oversold to a certain point, portfolios have to adjust, and that causes a change. And but that can self reinforce itself, and it can go for a lot longer than one's one's you know prepared for. Which is why it's so important that we use low leverage. So and that that's the that's just talking about forex. I also trade the S&P 500, which I started doing once you guys allowed that in the evaluation phase, and I'm now doing it in the portfolio managers phase. And I have a, um, I see that the the major backdrop behind the US stock markets are the fiscal and banking flows. They essentially fuel the markets in the long run. But then again, same thing with the Forex. When, once you get sentiment, going to extremes that causes uh, that causes your corrections and sometimes that can be severe well the current correction now is is pretty testy i'll admit <laughs> yeah yeah de- de- definitely i mean yeah I-, I love the way you trade it's completely different to what you know what i normally see when i do these interviews and you've got a very okay. different form of stats as well which is quite mm. almost perfect but Again, Dean, congrats on, on everything and your journey. Really appreciate the insight. But before we wrap things up, have you got any 
any advice or tips you can give future traders taking the evaluation of your in their shoes now that you've got some experience in in this field? I, I would say that the biggest hurdle and the biggest thing I struggle with is impatience. If I go back to 2004 when I started this, it was my impatience that that basically caused me to go downhill. And you can think now, okay, that was 18 years ago. If I'd showed more patience back then, it wouldn't have taken this long. And that is, the, to me, the biggest thing. And what's going to, what are you going to do? How are you going to behave if you can't get hold of that, if you can't rein in that impatience? Is that you're going to over leverage? You're going to obviously just be too risky. And this was the thing that stood out with you guys compared to the others because the, the other criteria that you have to meet with these other companies, you have to take these, to me, insane risks. I mean, how do you make 10% a month consistently if you're not even prepared for the sort of risk that that involves, you know? And if you're a newbie, you're just not going to do it. It's You'd just be lucky. You might do it one month, but you're not going to do it consistently. So that would be my biggest my biggest thing. And I would also say, I think it's important that you understand the difference between emotions and intellect and even instincts. I, I even noticed this when, uh, after I passed the evaluation stage. So I was sharing this with a lot of my family and, and I actually confided with my son a couple of days after, after we had our first chat. And I said, you know what, son, I actually feeling a little overconfident at the moment and I've got to check that. So the ability to feel yeah. that welling up and knowing that that's something you've got to rein in, it's, uh, it's too easy to get swept away. So that, was, um, so that would be my other advice. Just make sure you can understand the difference between an emotion talking and your actual brain talking. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, you definitely know, you've got that self-awareness that you need as a trader. So, you know, kudos, yeah. kudos to you. Um, how old is your son, by the way? But, I mean, that's, that's incredible that you're trading and he's trading as well. Sorry, how does what, sorry? How old is your son? Oh, is my son is 20, 20 I've got to get this right. I'm, I'm bad with this, 25 <laughs> or 26. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, that's pretty decent. That's more or less the kind of age that I started as well. I started when I was 20. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, that's that's so cool, man. I, I really do want to teach my son how to trade. Did he did he learn himself or did you teach him? He he saw me as a he's looking up to me in that respect, but he decided to go his own route and he he bought his own, you know, like a course. He went into a course that's got a yeah. group and all that sort of stuff, and there's a sort of indirect mentors and uh, yeah. he gets to chat with other traders. The good thing is, I mean, he's been doing this for a couple of years, he hasn't blown an account. And that is great. He hasn't, I mean, he's an investor too. He owns property, he owns stocks. But as a trader, he's, he's definitely demonstrating he's got the patience, which is great. That, that to me is just, yeah. <laughs> That's Wonderful. fantastic. Yeah, that, that takes many, many years. I mean, maybe one day I might in, interview him on- Hopefully. Yeah. In a portfolio manager YouTube for CTI. He's going to be watching this. He's going to be watching this video. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you one day. I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right. um, Dean, again, th thanks for your time. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And yeah, congrats and just keep doing what you're doing. You don't really need much thanks, advice. Yeah. Just yeah, just keep these results up, and you know what to do next, right? Cheers. Yeah, mate. Definitely. Oh, good. Oh, good. All right. Nice one, Dean. Have a good day. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. See you, Diego. Right. See ya. Bye-bye. And there you have it. Another trader passing a CTI evaluation. If you guys think you know what it takes to become a portfolio manager at CTI, come check us out at citytradersimperium.com or just follow us for any updates on YouTube. Or if you want to learn or struggling to be a profitable trader, working on your psychology, we also offer courses such as the Build Your Edge course for your mindset, the corrective strategy, the STT strategy, or the recent smart money concept strategy, the bank level trading strategy. If you guys want to improve your trading or want to become a portfolio manager or even implement your strategy, come check us out, guys. And I hope to see you soon.